Good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. Come on in, grab a seat, get your coffee. Hope you're doing well. Mm -mm -mm. you Oops. I'm checking to see if we're live hi Lynn hi Lynn from Minnesota how good to see you how are you when are you coming back to Arizona it's gonna be not so hot pretty soon <laughs> actually it's not so hot now for us I think it's actually cools down in the evenings and the mornings during the day, stay in the house as usual. Mm. Oh, I wish I had a second cup of tea. Anyway, happy Sunday, everybody. Oops. Okay, I see people are ready. Come on in. Join us. Join us, join us. Here we go. Good morning, Jeff. October Lynn. Yay. Yay. How are you, Jeff? Happy Sunday, Jeff. Old man. <laughs> Just had a birthday, so I can tease you. I better be careful, because we all have birthdays. <laughs> Come on in, have a seat. Say hi if you want to. We are almost through September. Can you believe it? Um, pretty soon we'll be talking about our toy drive. Uh, yeah, time goes. Yay, Lynn. Happy, happy October for us. Gonna go ahead and uh, take on the hair. I went in, uh, to the eye doctors yesterday and um, ordered some new glasses. I found out my glasses aren't working for me anymore, and that explains a lot. <laughs> oh, I swear. I swear. Um, you know, you go to pick up something and read it real quick, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, shoot, i got to get my glasses. Who am I kidding? I can't read anything without glasses. So I got stronger and new glasses, and I'm still in sticker shock from the price of eyeglasses. It's crazy. This world, everything is too expensive. I uh, get updates on my phone about the wildfire here. It is now 70% contained, thank God. Um, we've lost no buildings. Um, I, I understand there was um, a helicopter crash. I don't know, it wasn't on the news, but uh, unfortunately two emergency responders were killed so god bless them and may peace be with their family but the fire is 70 percent contained just they got the parameter all logged out whatever they do and it's burning inside and the drive up the highway 88 is going to be blackened blackened um but thankfully like i say uh Everything is safe. Nobody's being evacuated. 
Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Gary. <laughs> Jeff. Good morning, Franny. Hope you're well, Franny. Happy Sunday. Um, also, I wanted to say something about the uh, accident, the crash at our Elks Lodge. Um, we've reopened, and going down there and seeing our friends for the first time since the crash is like, Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. Oh, and, and the ones who were injured, to see them coming down to the lodge and socializing again. Um, the bar is needs repaired. It'll be under repair for a while, but we're in the hall. Those of you that are members and out of state, we are reopened. We will be open. Um, it, it's, it's a very sad thing that happened to us down there we're we're a close-knit group and i think because of this we've all stepped in a close step closer to each other um please continue to pray for those who were injured and um as we move forward we need to remember um when you have friends in the social club like this it's important to pray for each other everything else aside we we help a lot of we we do a lot of um donations to children's foundations and everything we do it's a non-profit so it's a good group and i'm happy to say we are open and running and and um please keep um all of them in your prayers including tom um our friend who needs all of our prayers so anyway god bless you all at the elks my brothers and sister elks i've been a member there 13 years now and i'll probably continue um it's about my only social thing i do but i feel safe down there and the people are very very nice good morning gary how are you good to see you um so please share this message and it is time my friends for the joke of the day as soon as i can find it <laughs> you ready a man survived a shipwreck and finds his way to a deserted island he is able to survive there for more than three years, and finally, he was rescued. His rescuers are amazed at not only how well he survived, but also the small structures he was able to build. What are those buildings, they asked him. Well, the one in the middle is my home, he replied, and the one to the west is my church. The one on the east is the church I used to go to. <laughs> There's a little bit of truth in that one. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite you to open your hearts and clear your minds to receive God's message. Dear Lord, you are an awesome God, and we thank you for all you have given us. We can hardly look around and not see the wonders of your majesty. We ask your guidance in our daily lives so we live the way you want us to live, Lord. We ask blessings on all of those hearing your word right now. We ask for you to touch our leaders' hearts that they lead in the way you want them to lead. We ask you, Lord, to put a hedge of protection around our country, around our military, and to 
touch the hearts of those running for office at this time that they keep you in everything they do for the USA. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 So last week we studied the armor of God. We studied about the belt of truth, the body armor, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. If you didn't see it, you can catch it on YouTube or find it on our AJ Cowboy Church page. Um, and today, continuing in, I, I, I am giving you God's blessings and love and reminding you of what he has given us to survive in this world. And today, we are going to talk about the spiritual gifts that he has given us through the Holy Spirit. So, putting the phone away, which is where I see your comments. I'll be back after the message. And we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Now, dear brothers and sisters, Regarding your questions about the special ability the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of all of them. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. Now, we all have faith, but spiritual faith is an unusual measure of trust in the power of God. Just so you understand, it's, we all have faith. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophecy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to a church where they speak in tongues or have been around somebody speaking in tongues. And the Bible says if somebody is speaking in tongues, they should only do so when somebody is there to interpret what is being said. Otherwise, uh, what's the sense in speaking in tongues if nobody knows what you're saying, right? Speaking in tongues is speaking, and some call it the the language of angels. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Um, the Holy Spirit is, of course, the third of the Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. So, we are giving him equal time today, the Spirit who's in all of us. He's, he's with us to guide us, to help us, 
and today we are learning a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. And now we are in Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 6. Um, Corinthians and Romans were written by Paul. Okay, Romans 12, 6. In his grace... God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. We all need a little encouragement now and then, don't we? Every day, maybe. <laughs> if it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And we need to pray that the Spirit guides all our leaders. They certainly need God to help them in this country and around the world. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. And love is the 11th commandment that Jesus gave us before he left this earth. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. That this is uh, being lazy is also called sloth. And the Jewish faith takes that very seriously. Um, it's a big sin in the Jewish faith to be lazy. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. We talked a little bit about praying last week, don't, didn't we? Whenever you're in trouble, does it automatically your default goes to pray and even if you say dear Lord help them um, that's praying that is praying my friends when God's people are in need be ready to help them always be eager to practice hospitality bless those who persecute you don't curse them pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. <laughs> don't be a know-it-all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Pray for them, right? Um, there's enough evil in this world that we don't need to jump on that bandwagon. When, uh, when bad things happen, just pray and be kind and walk away if you must. Um, things happen, I know, and you can't help but just snap right back at them. Don't do it, uh, I'm guilty right here, uh, but it's hard not to. That's why we're Christians, because we are better than that. We have the Spirit guiding us, and we need to remember that. We need to not only remember to pray all the time, but to lean on the Spirit, to listen to your gut. Uh, your gut is your Holy Spirit. I've even had sheriffs and police officers tell me always listen to your gut and um, don't always do that but the more you focus on it and the more you keep it in your head the more 
you will do it and the more the spirit will help you do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable do all that you can to live in peace with everyone I didn't say these were going to be easy things to do, did I? Um, it's just what scripture. I, I am mostly reading scripture today. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. One of my favorite scriptures right there. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Because here they are after you picking on you, being mean to you, whatever they're doing that's wrong, and you're going to be kind to them. You're going to give them a drink of water. You're going to give them food. You're going to you're going to still be nice and smile and walk away and and that's that. I get a lot of comfort in knowing that everyone on this earth will be judged. No matter what they do, good or bad, they will be judged. So find comfort in that fact and walk away. You will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. And this, my friends, if you want to look it up later, is Romans 12, 20. Great scripture. Don't take revenge on anybody. Don't do it. Don't let evil conquer you. But conquer evil by doing good. Amen? That's right. This is what it's all about. Doing good. Following the Spirit. God being God knew that we would need constant reminders of what Jesus taught while he was here on earth. So therefore, he sent the Spirit to be in each and every human on this earth. We are all given the spirit in the beginning that grows with us, that guides us. And um, he's there for a reason. He is our conscious, right? Spiritual gifts purpose is to help the church function more effectively. If we're all kind and loving to each other and we're all in the same church family, our church will grow. And by the way, our little online church is growing. I think um, this last week we've had nearly 500 views. Praise God, the word is being spread. And hopefully we're bringing in a lost soul or two. But we must never use our gifts for our own gain or to manipulate others. We are all given gifts so we can build up God's church. Remember that. To use them effectively, we must, number one, realize that all gifts and abilities come from God. When I was at the eye doctor, I, of course, started talking about my art and just showed her one or two pieces that I had pictures on my phone, and she said, ugh. I can't do anything like that. I have no artistic gift. And I said, yes, but you have the gift to fit me with good eyeglasses and to know what I need so that I can see properly. I said, that's your gift. And, and if you think about it, everybody has a different job. We have carpenters, we have roofers, we have bricklayers. We have artists, we have cooks, and these are all gifts from God. Your, your, your best thing that you stand out with are part of the spirit. Think about things that way. If you're a good driver, not everybody likes to drive. 
you know, everybody's different. You like riding horses. Not everybody can ride horses. You like dogs. Whatever you're best at is a gift from God. And you need to understand that not everyone has the same gifts. If they did, what, what kind of world would this be? We would all be the same. You know, that everybody can lay brick, everybody can do roofing, you know? That how, would, how would people earn a living if everybody was able to do everything? Think about it that way, right? Know who you are and what you do best, you personally. Even these people that are running for office, that, ha that is a gift from the Spirit, the, the, to be able to get up and speak in front of people, to have knowledge of laws and how laws work, and we pray that all the people that are elected know they are there because of God. Not so much how the people voted because everything is God's plan. We need to dedicate our gifts to God's service, not to our own personal success. Kind of goes back to the political thing, but whatever you do, do it for God. And be willing to use our gifts wholeheartedly, not backing not holding back anything from God's service. Whatever you do, think of doing it for the Lord. As like I said last week, whatever you do, offer it up as prayer. That's the best way to think about doing the dishes for God. Nobody likes to do dishes, but when you're doing them, offer it up as prayer and I bet you'll do a better job. Whether it's loading the dishwasher, if you're like me, you hand wash them and get them done, get them out of the way. Make it a little prayer. God gives gifts according to his wisdom and graciousness, not according to our faith. We have the word of knowledge is a gift. Words of knowledge that you can receive direct from the Holy Spirit can literally cover an infinite number of things in your daily life. Think about teachers. You know, teachers are very knowledgeable. They're very organized and they're, they have the ability to teach, to get people to understand, children, adults, to understand and learn and grow. Life-saving knowledge, uh, doctors, nurses, health care givers, people who take a CPR ca uh, class, emergency responders, all given this kind of knowledge through the Holy Spirit and through teachers. Impending crisis or emergency, we just went through this and a lot of places are still having wildfires and we need those emergency responders. Would you walk out in the middle of a forest fire and fight back the flames? They, they do the back burning. On my page you have a video of them going through doing the back burning and you can hear the, the, the leaders of these emergency responders saying go faster. And they have to start a fire to burn up around the ed perimeter of the wildfire. So when the wildfire reaches that, there's nothing more to burn past this point. And they know this. They were given the knowledge to know this. Emergency responders and anybody can know CPR to save a life. If somebody falls down and needs to be resuscitated in front of you. Are you able to help them? Maybe not, but there could be somebody else there that has that knowledge that can help them. That comes from the spirit, it's a gift. The word of wisdom. God's wisdom to handle and solve some of life's real tough problems. We all need the wisdom of God. And the older you get, the more wisdom you get just from life experiences. 
and you can look back on that and the spirit says look at how far you've come look at when this happened what you did and now you can do that you know the wisdom it, it's endless it's endless and then we have the gift of prophecy and the definition of prophecy is giving a message received from God to the community of believers. Um, preachers can be considered prophets because we are guided in what to preach, how to preach, how to make you understand God's words. So when I preach, I'm prophesizing. I'm not telling you the future. I'm not going to give you the winning lottery numbers. I, I cannot do that. But I can give you the message that God and the Holy Spirit gave me to relay to you. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will give you a direct, clear message to give to someone else. You speak out the word to this person and then be done with it. It, it, it. This can apply to so many things, maybe a bad situation. And, and just all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, if I say this, things will be better. And you do. And then say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit. Because that's where it comes from. Human beings can't come up with all this stuff on their own. There's just no way. Even people, you hear about people who are mentally handicapped and they have special abilities in themselves. That is definitely, definitely gifts from the Spirit. The gift of faith. F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust him. Amen. Faith. As I said before, all Christians have faith. Encourage others through faith to ask the Holy Spirit to bring his faith, courage, and boldness up in you so you will have his faith, strength, and courage to do what God is asking you to do for him. And keep the faith during hard times so that, oh, keep the faith during hard times when you know, okay, God's going to take care of me. I got something on me. Sorry. God will take care of this. God will take care of this thing that's bugging my face. Um, <laughs> sorry. The gift of healing. You know, I back to faith for a minute. Dog on it. Dog on it. I'm sorry. Something's got me. Um. Totally lost my mind. <laughs> my mind. My train of thought. Thought on that. Um. I'll get back to that. Something about faith. I don't know. I'm getting older, <laughs> and I'm a little worried about myself. <laughs> Things come and go very quickly in this brain. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you? The gift of healing. We pray for the sick all the time. All the time. Um, sometimes it's all you can do is pray. And um, we have our prayer request page. I get prayer requests all the time. And um, we are all very good at praying. And sometimes all you need to say is, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we pray for God's will to be done. Uh, and I was told when my mother was in the hospital, I, I was really glad to know that her doctor was a Christian. He was Catholic, actually. And that doctor said, Sometimes he can do all that's humanly possible to heal. But he has seen the hand of God move when there is no other medical reason for the outcome. Amen. 
to hear that from a doctor, that a doctor has actually seen a miracle and he's just left saying, thank you, Lord. Because God can overrule doctors and medicine and just heal people. If, if you've watched The Chosen at all, and, and I hope you have, it's a wonderful series. And pretty soon uh, season five will be coming out. And I just saw a thing where there's five, six, and seven. So it's going to be broken down. But it was focused on the miracles of Jesus. And to think about a miracle is hard to do and hard to understand. That, my friends, is where your faith comes in. And I know miracles happen. And I am praying for a miracle for my friend Linda who's just been diagnosed with cancer and has just started her chemo. I have another friend who's been going through treatments for breast cancer and her faith is strong and she's just plugging along. It's faith that brings miracles and God can trump any diagnosis. And those of you who are going through a medical problem just remember that God's in charge. In spite of what the doctors say, keep the faith and believe in miracles because they happen. Amen? Amen. The working of miracles. Remember, the Bible tells us that absolutely nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. God created every single thing on this earth. How, how can a person even think that he can't have control over everything that happens on this earth? Every human being's health and life and, and illness and healing. He healed me of cancer many, many moons ago. It's so long ago, I don't remember how long ago I had colon cancer. Amen, I'm thankful. And now look at me, preaching the word. I never said growing up, when I grow up, I want to be a preacher. <laughs> Here I am. And I love it. I love the scripture. I love learning and reading the Bible. <sighs> Nothing is impossible with God, which will include any divine miracle that he wants to perform. Jesus performed many, many miracles. And, and those are shown in the Chosen, the, the series that you can download for free off of the internet, The Chosen. These Christians are given a great portion of humility and always praise God and give him credit for the miracle. Always praise God. Then there is the discerning of spirits. Three we have demonic spirits, we have God's angels, and human spirits. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. I had somebody tell me one time at a dinner table it was probably a holiday, and I was with a certain group of people, and I was asked to say grace, so I stood up to say grace, and someone said to me, okay, fine, but don't say anything about Jesus. I don't want to hear about Jesus. Now, why would someone say that? Because they have the spirit of the Antichrist. If people say to you, something bad about Jesus, pray for them because they are evil. Horoscopes, not of God. If God wanted you to know the future, you would know the future. They're fun, but it's not of God. Fortune tellers, mediums are not from God. You go to get your palm read, you go to a medium to tell you your future. Don't do it. 
they're not Christians. They're, they're not from God. I had a friend many years ago who went to a medium and he said, oh, it was so spooky. They, they knew so much and they were right on about this and that. But it was spooky. I, and I said, that's because it's not of God. What were you doing there? You had no business going to see that person. Don't go see that person again. Many, you know, it, why? Don't. You want prophecy. We just went through Revelation. And all that prophecy in there is yet to come. That's what God gave us. Very confusing not easy to understand, but that is prophecy. And all prophecy before that in the Bible came true. God tells us what he wants us to know. And if he don't want you to know, it's none of your business, okay? You could also receive a strong discerning of spirits direct from the Holy Spirit. You will immediately sense that something is not right knowing this is not from God, this is danger. What they used to say on Lost in Space, the robot, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Well, <laughs> I know. But, yeah, yeah. If it's danger, your whole body's going to say, oh, back off, well, hold on, hold on, this is bad, this is not good, and listen to it. If it's an angel... You should feel a sense of peace and comfort coming in from the Holy Spirit as he should be bearing witness that this is one of God's angels. The angels that came to Mary and Joseph. Angels that came to, to um, all the people in the Bible and they come to you too. You know, I've heard many people tell me after someone passed away that they had a visit from their loved one that said, don't worry, honey, everything's going to be all right. That's all they ever hear. It's an angel coming to see you. The angel brought them to you to tell you that. Maybe you had a visit from an angel, maybe not. But it, you would know the difference between an angel and a demon. The human spirits remember that god our father is very protective over his own and he will not hesitate to have his holy spirit give you major warning signals if you ever start to cross paths with a bad and evil person who is either targeting you or any of your close friends or family members for some kind of evil act We have the gift of tongues, which, as I said, were the language of angels. The Holy Spirit is the master prayer to God the Father. When you can't pray, the Spirit will pray for you. And again, the interpretation of tongues comes when people speak in tongues. There should be an interpreter there. If not, they should not be speaking in tongues if nobody's going to understand them anyway. And you can ask the Lord to receive any of these gifts. Just go to him in prayer and ask to be a vessel for him. Um, <laughs> Solomon, King Solomon asked for the gift of wisdom. And the Lord gave him the gift of wisdom, and he's known as the wisest man that ever lived on this earth. We need to always be open and sensitive to the Holy Spirit and help build others up and bring comfort when someone is needing comforting. And sometimes to comfort a person, you guys, all you have to do is sit quietly with them and be with them. You don't need to keep talking and talking, just listen. Or if they have nothing to say, just sit quietly, especially when someone is grieving. The best thing you can do is sit quietly with them. Maybe hold their hand and maybe pray with them. 
And in 1 Peter 4.10, we read, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have a gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And I want to ask you right now, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Now is the time. You have the Spirit in you. Ask, Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Ask forgiveness of your sins. If you're not quite sure what's a sin, ask Jesus and the Spirit, and they will lay it on you, on your heart. And then ask forgiveness, and Jesus will tell you, go and sin no more. And this is what you need to do so you can have eternity in heaven and not be thrown into the pit of fire for all eternity. Please accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be a Christian. And then be baptized. Come see me. I'll baptize you anytime. Um, we do it at church in the park sometimes. So be baptized. You can be baptized at many, many places. They're waiting for you. And now it is time for our prayer circle. This is our prayer circle. This is where we come and lay our request at the feet of the Lord and give thanks for answered prayers. Dear Lord, we want to pray for the lost souls. May we bring in lost souls through our church service right here, right now. We pray, Lord, for all those battling cancer. We pray for their healing Lord we pray for a miracle Lord and we thank you and pray for all the caregivers and all the doctors who care for those who are terribly sick Lord your will be done we pray for those who are living in an abusive household Lord please touch the heart of the abuser and keep those in such households safe please Lord and for all those things that lie silent in our hearts, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. And now, now. Hold hands together virtually and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Are you ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen, 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 amen. So, wow. Let's see where we are. Good morning, Jim. I'm just jumping in here to see who's here. So I want to thank you all for coming to church. If I didn't say hi to you, I didn't see you. I apologize. I go back and check later. And everybody, I do appreciate you being here. I really do. And uh, I can see you're here, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I always think of you when I say what scripture we're on. But thank you all for coming to church. I hope. You remember the Holy Spirit as you go through the week and as you go through the rest of your life because he's there guiding you, helping you. And if there's a certain gift you want from God, don't forget, you can just pray about it and ask the Lord 
and I'm sure he's such a gracious God. He will give it to you. So thank you for coming to church. Please share this message. There is somebody out here on your, out there on your friend's page who needs to hear this message. And don't forget, if you miss it, you can always find this on YouTube or AJ Cowboy Church page. Thank you for coming to church. God bless you. If you have prayer requests, let me know. Post it on the page. Post it on our prayer request page. And um, let me see if I could see. I, I don't know. But yes, thank you for joining Cowboy Church. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. And remember, if you get down on Saturday night, you still got to get up for church on Sunday morning. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next week. If you need me, message me. Take care. Lynn, take care. Gary, Diane, thank you for your help as always. Bye, everybody. God bless you.